Today we're going to be talking about using InDesign. It says read the handout and follow the directions. Now if you click on handout, here's a digital version of that handout. Some of you may have a paper version as well. You're going to be graded on creating a path, which is this, altering the shape and effect of the path, placing an object, which is this one, and changing the object properties like this one. And what you're going to do is you're going to do all four of these in one InDesign page and save it as this is 1A. So you do 1A underscore last name first initial. Be sure it's your last name and first initial underscore InDesign 1 and turn that in the Dropbox. You're going to follow the directions on this using InDesign worksheet. And basically, it's going to explain a little bit about InDesign. So it says, in InDesign, photo areas and graphics are created and placed in the same way. In order to design a spread, it's necessary to know how to work with these elements. For those submitting digital photo and graphic files, correctly placing and linking objects is vital to proper submission. InDesign is a desktop publishing software. You create like newsletters, flyers, newspapers, schedules, menus, stuff like that in Adobe InDesign. It's not meant like a drawing software like Adobe Illustrator or photo editing like Photoshop. It's a desktop publishing software. We're going to be using this all next six weeks when we do the simulation with the band. So what you're going to do is you're going to read these words to know because these are going to be on the six weeks test. So you, you need to be familiar with these. So go through those. And it talks about the frame tools. And it has a, the tool menu bar here. In InDesign, you can create graphics and design elements or as photo areas. These three tools with diagonals are for photos or graphics. The ones without the diagonals are for text. Although InDesign gives you the option for ellipses, circles, and polygons, the rectangle is the most common shape for a frame. You can select the rectangle frame tool from the tool palette. Let's go ahead and open up Adobe InDesign. Adobe InDesign is the little pink ID at the bottom. So open that up. Once InDesign is open, you're going to create a new document. So click on New Document. And uh, this is for print. It's letter size. Mine by default is set by Picas. If you always choose letter, you know it's the 8.5 by 11. We can go and change the InDesign preferences and change the units and increments. I'll show you in a minute how to do. Be sure page size is letter. One thing to notice, if you're working on a wire that's a trifold where you fold three ways, you can choose a brand new document with three columns. And now gutter is the space in between those columns. How wide do you want it to be in between the margins? You also have the margins for the top, bottom, inside, and outside. But right now it's set in picas. You can actually change that to say inches. And I'll show you how in just a minute. Make sure the page size is letter and you don't have to change anything else and click OK. Now if you notice, you got your page here. In InDesign, you can have multiple pages open in one design. You just go layout, pages, add page. You can move pages. You have ruler guides. You can adjust the margins and columns. If you go to InDesign, preferences, units and increments, horizontal and vertical, you want to change that to inches. Because when you're dealing with the page layouts, InDesign's meant primarily for print. So you're going to be talking about inch margins like you would in like Microsoft Word. So we're going to change that two inches, horizontal and vertical, and just click OK. Now if I go layout, margins and columns, instead of picus, it's 0.5 inches, half an inch. If you see at the top now, mine's in inches up here at the ruler and on the side. To change that, you go InDesign, Preferences, Units and Increments. And then under Ruler Units, you change Horizontal and Vertical to Inches instead of Points or Picus. Right there. And then click OK. So now your ruler up at the top has inches. One more thing. If you want to create guides, it's just like Illustrator or uh, Photoshop. You just click on the ruler and drag them out. You can drag as many as you want. Or if you want to get rid of them, just put them back. 
if you can't see your ruler you just go view and it'll say show rulers or hide rulers or command r command r will show and hide rulers use those because they they always help you keep your page balanced with the layout and stuff using the ruler guides and you're going to need that on some of the upcoming assignments getting back to using indesign assignment the next page it says draw your frame by clicking and dragging the appropriate size and placing the object on the next step so we are going to go in indesign we're going to do this first one right here we're going to create a path so we're going to use the ellipse tool let's go to our menu here and uh, we're going to choose the ellipse frame tool the ellipse frame tool and we're going to click and drag click and drag and you got an empty frame frames are meant for like placing pictures for what we're doing just for the record you can use the regular ellipse tool and do what we're doing as well so I got a, a empty ellipse frame. Let's go back to the instructions. You can transform it by going window, object and layout, transform. So I got this right here. Now I can change the X and Y coordinates. Like if I want it to be further down, I could choose two. I mean further to the right, which is X. Further down change the Y. I can also adjust the width and height with the uh, transform palette. So that's something that's good to know. Choose a square at the top left, indicate point of the object. This is the reference point. You can click on the reference point and change it instead of the top left. Objects will appear in the direct center. That's the reference point. You can resize this by clicking on the, let's get the selection tool and you can resize it by clicking on uh, any of these little corner or side anchors. So you can uh, manually resize it as well as by number in the transform palette. Like you have directions that require specific size, you would want to go here. If you're just trying to fit something in a certain area, it's just easy to use a selection tool. We are going to use the path type tool for the next one. Read over these definitions and words to know because they will be on the test and we're going to use a path type tool it's not the regular type tool it's the type on path tool so shift T should get you the type on a path tool or you can just click and choose it right there now make sure that it looks like this it looks like a T on top of a path right there it's a little slanted here's the trick to using the type on path tool your mouse looks like this now now watch what happens when I put my mouse right over that path Put your mouse right over that path with the type on path tool. You get a little plus. See that little plus pop up? When you see that plus anywhere along the edge, that's where you, your words will pop up. What you got to do to get it started is you just click one time. And you see the blinking cursor? I'm just going to type type on path tool. You can adjust the size up at the top margin. You can adjust the text color right up here. You can also go to the color palette and choose other colors as well. You can change the font type. You can make it italic or bold. But that's the type on path tool. That is the first part in using InDesign, creating a path. Thank you all for watching. Hey class, if you like this video, please click like below and subscribe to this channel. Also, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.